Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. This is the Mega Base Challenge, and in case you guys didn't realize, the uh, oil update has now officially been released, and with that has brought many, many updates to the game. However, many of these we've already been playing with. However, there are a lot of different things that are filled out here within the extra change list as far as things that are that are you know going on here beyond all of the new stuff that they have added into the game so there's the game update right there and you can you know follow the link or whatever to get down here and <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff my personal favor is that duplicates will no longer shower until they die if they're infected with slime lung have you ever had a shower where you're like i just i don't think i'm ever gonna get out of this shower i personally have had that multiple times i like a good long shower I've never quite thought that I would shower until I die, but I can see where a duplicate might do that. They tend to have that sort of thought where if there was a chance of death that they would probably take it. So I'm glad they've updated that. But what we're going to be looking at here is I'm, I'm not happy, terribly happy with the uh, air conditioning system that was devised in the last episode. So right now, I just started tapping this area over here, which is the natural gas geyser. And that whole episode kind of went on for a long time. So it wasn't quite as good as I would like. You know, as far as, you know, I, I didn't have enough time to really do things correctly. So I want to take some time here and I want to expand a little bit on the air conditioning unit because as far as the temperature is concerned, the base is still quite warm. Now, I'm not going to be able to really isolate the base as much as I would like, but potentially, you know, eventually I will get there. Um, the big thing though is I want to make sure that I want to have an ability the ability to cool down my base if I need to and The best way that I know to do that or well, there's several different ways we could do that one We could potentially try a self-cooling thermoregulator system. However, those are very very power hungry So until I have a large power base I don't think that's going to be a very effective way to cool things down and it seems like the updates would still nothing nothing says that that wouldn't work so Eventually, I might try one of those. Uh, the other thing, though, is I think having these thermal regulators right next to this natural gas generator is a better idea. Because right now, I'm, I'm taking this path, right? And it's going all the way over here, and this is where that cooling's happening. So there's a lot of run for that pipe, and I don't think it's necessary. I think the air conditioning unit could be built right off the side here in this natural gas area. And I think I can also optimize this space over here as well to grow some pinch of pepper plants. So that's my main game plan for this episode. It's going to be taking the air conditioning unit to, you know, version 2.0, cleaning it up a little bit so that it's a little bit more compact, a little bit more technical, and I like that, and less spread out, taking up half my base and all that fun stuff. You know, it's a little less overcomplicated keep it nice and simple and make it more effective in the in the process so that's what i'm going to be working on over there and hopefully i'll be able to grow some pinch of pepper plants by the end of the episode so that's that's the goal let's get to it so one of the things i'm going to do make sure i dig this space up kind of get a I'm, I'm essentially going to build this out to the left here right so i've got my natural gas generator over here and you can see it's running liquid from the right to the left side so I can run it past several thermoregulators and then so I can cool that gas that's going through those multiple times. So that way I have to pump less, right? A pump is going to use 240 watts continuously while that's running. And then each time it runs through the thermoregulator, I'm going to use about that much power again after that. So if you hook one thermoregulator up and then you hook up another thermoregulator up, you don't have to pump that gas twice. So you get... A little bit of it's a little bit more efficient so that's the idea okay here's an interesting comment um, some of the gas is labeled as flammable inside the base now you can't actually ignite gas currently in such a way that it would blow up your base there's been a lot of talk about this at least from the community of potentially having that you know be one of the hazards you could run into but in the current state of the game, you can't blow yourself up. So Abby's talking about a system here as far as creating an airlock, or shall we say, a, like a germ-free lock. 
using like a pump and a filter to kind of pump everything except for the chlorine out of that space. And I think that is an effective method for doing that, especially if you have like a certain volume that you can maintain so that the pump doesn't constantly run. Um, okay, so here's an image of that too. So you can, you can see the pump here and then the filter so that this is essentially just, you know, cleaning itself each time yeah, some bad gas gets in there. So that is that is one option for, cre for creating that you know, a buffer zone. I'm not so sure that's quite as efficient though as just having exosuit. And I think there's also a third thing that can be done with plastics that actually allow you to create a real um, sealed off area. It's a little bit tricky, but I have, I have heard that it's possible. Come on, duplicants, build this already. That's all you need to do, just gotta do one thing. Okay, so I get this question quite a bit, and that is why do I heat up polluted water in order to clean it, rather than just using, you know, the utility and filtering um, polluted water back into clean water? Well, obviously you can do that. The, the reason I don't do that too often is because it uses up sand, and sand can also be used for the deodorizer, which is a method for getting rid of polluted oxygen, which you, can do in a couple of different ways as well, but honestly, I think it's a little bit more interesting way to purify water rather than just run it through some sand. And the other benefit is that you get rid of the germ. Lil makes a good point here as far as pumping inside of my 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 base over here, as far as this farm, to actually putting this pump down lower because carbon dioxide is heavier. So you can see down here it's like two kilograms. And by the time you get up a little bit higher, it's I guess it's lighter weight, but it's still 1.5 kilograms in there. So this is really built up as far as the amount of stuff that's in that space. What I really want to do is get this exosuit thing. I mean, stay focused, build this thing. All right. <laughs> ha, yes. Okay. So this is going to be great. So the pinch of pepper plants, they consume polluted water. And one of the problems I have is that I just have a little bit too much polluted water. So you don't necessarily need to purify all of it if you can consume it and make it into something that's going to be useful. Yes. All right. So put a couple of these hydroponic tiles in here, just like so. Making sure to rotate them. Ah, crap. Dr. Camille has slime lung. It's all right. She'll get better. So see how this polluted water, I mean, it's just backed up. Not good. But if I give it another outlet, then I'm all set. I don't have to worry about it. Do I have any seeds for it though? Oh, I already do. Bam, plant that sucker up. All right, so now I'm gonna work on this space over here, right? Try to move this ore scrubber over and then add what I need to get my exosuits working because I'm tired of my duplicates getting sick. <laughs> I mean, I, I've been changing who can go in and out of this door over here, so. You know, Meep is capable of going in and out now. But the thing is, I end up forgetting as far as like who has access out there. And it's just kind of annoying. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that once and for all now. Now, these things are a little bit weird, right? An exosuit and then an exosuit dock. So beyond this point, you're going to want to be in. <laughs> I don't know. Ah. If you build this, then they absolutely have to be inside of it, right? We'll just cover all the bases and figure out which one I don't need. <laughs> Request a suit. One of those suits is going to go over there. Come on, let's move an Atmos suit. Bam. There we go. Aha. See? It's to the right. So I didn't need the one on the left. So what that means is I should be able to have two exosuit docks over here and have two separate suits that people will then use to go on out there. So now I should be able to say that anybody can go out there and do what they need to do. All right, so I have all of this hooked up. Now I just need to feed this pump and kind of its discharge from an area where it's going to be nice and hot and pump that back into my system. So I'm gonna use just normal gas pipes, but this time I'm gonna make them out of abyssalite. It'll make the game go a little bit quicker. I don't have to mine a whole bunch more abyss light in order to make this stuff get there. However, since this is a nice hot area over here, I don't want to mess this up. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and just run it like this. 
and then bring it back out. Okay. So there's the two discharges right there. You can see I'm starting to run into a, a problem with all of my polluted water. Well, I guess not completely. I mean, it's all it's all finding its way around. But <laughs> I've added some more pinch of pepper plants there just in order to, in order to consume more. These have a pretty long growth cycle. You know, you're talking 22 cycles for a domestic growth. I mean, that's a lot. All right, so Greggles here has an interesting comment, and this comment is more or less how to cool the electrolyzers, right? So electrolyzers give off a fair amount of heat, uh, or at least they have, and I didn't see any updates that said they, they no longer do. So they kind of emit oxygen at a higher temperature, no matter, depending on whatever, it doesn't depend on the input of the liquid. I guess it did at one point and doesn't it anymore, but it's subject to change depending on where they settle with it. The, um, the thing is though, is that these are not the coldest running things. And what he was doing there is he was actually cooling the air that's being produced, or at least it seemed like it was cooling the air that was being produced or cooling the electrolyzer that was producing the air by dripping cooled water on that electrolyzer, which makes sense because it is a giant, um, heat sink in itself as far as being four tiles large and made of metal that you could potentially make that out of something conductive and if you can cool that then it's going to cool the air that's being produced for your base which is an idea for for cooling I guess <laughs> um, right at the source so I like that idea so I could have a couple of liquid drips right here to potentially cool that down. The thing is, I need some cold water to begin with. I do have some down here. This is 22 degrees Celsius. I wonder if I could find a way to drip it down and then kind of pump it around. I don't know. I don't. I can't really take it offline, but I think that's a an interesting idea as far as um, actually cooling the oxygen that's being produced at its source as compared to adding something extra to the system, right? And then cooling the air that's been produced already. Hmm, I like it. He also mentioned that it would be a great thing to tie in with the net cooling thing, which is those self-cooling thermoregulators that can then cool something like a big shower or something that's made of metal in order to cool down the liquid, which I've used a couple of times, or I used, I guess, in, in one video where I was cooling the liquid that was coming out of a steam geyser down to a, like a, a reasonable temperature, which actually gives it a reason to cool that water down because a lot of the stuff that you can run as far as toilets and all of that, it just doesn't matter what temperature that the water's flowing into it. So that's a, that's an, I like it. That's a different idea. Uh, here's another solution to cooling a base down using wheeze warts. Now I don't have any wheeze warts available to me yet. I think there is a cold biome way over here. So I might be able to get a couple of wheeze warts which is really, honestly, the best way to cool your base down because those do a good job. Let's check this out, though. All right, so you can see exactly what he's doing here. He's got wheeze warts surrounded by hydrogen so there you get that nice thermal conductivity, you know, and in, in the efficiency of, of running that. And it's also running in a circle so that the wheeze warts, as they're pumping the gas upwards, it kind of circulates around and doesn't end up with a dead zone. So that right there looks like a really effective way, not only to cool, well, I guess to cool water, right? And essentially pump that around. So thanks, Yako, for the uh, awesome recommendation there. There's many different cool solutions that you guys come up for cooling things down, because there's like so many different ways you could possibly do it. Why am I using those gas valves again? Hmm. Okay, so I've had this question pop up a couple of times, and that is why why am I not using a gas valve here? Why am I using gas bridges in order to increase the packet size, right? So the reason is is that a valve is designed to restrict the flow. It's not designed to build the flow up to a certain point. So if what's running through this pipe here, you can see how it contains 500 grams of oxygen. If I want that to be one kilogram, then I have to use a bridge which allows for two inflows to kind of merge at its out at its outlet. So you, you can combine multiple streams at this point right here. So that's kind of the trick we're using by doing this number right here and building that into one kilogram packets. 
the valve isn't designed to do that but for the sake of it i'm going to go ahead and put one in here just kind of show that all right so this thing finally got built so trying to go back to that topic see how it's set to 1000 grams a second and the flow that's running through there i mean it's not coming out at one kilogram per tile right there you have to use the those bridges in order to allow those to kind of stack up so you're essentially taking more inputs and giving it one output and therefore it can stack up all right this is awesome so i got the little exosuit system up and running you can see meep and his little bubble head just went and grabbed some slime from the puffed up there and now that should uh even once he cleans it up should head on over here and turn into uh some fertilizer for the dust caps awesome all right so i noticed a problem that i'm having here Every once in a while, inside of here, I'll get a little bit of natural gas, and that's causing damage to my suits. So they take a little bit of damage when the wrong type of gas gets into them. So I'm going to add a couple of airflow tiles, and hopefully just kind of let some of this stuff drain down here to the lower part of the base. Alright, as far as the air conditioning system 2.0, I have several bridges hooked up, so that way I'm getting you know, packets of 1,000 continuously out of this. So that makes these a little bit more efficient and allows me to run, use a little less power up here. So this thing turns on every once in a while, this thing turns on every once in a while, and not a lot of extra power it finds its way into the batteries. But you can see the number is slowly going up just a little bit right there. Uh, the real benefit here is that I should be getting out some nice, cool, gas so the stuff that's coming out of here you can see it's all the way down to 8.8 .8 degrees celsius which is quite a bit lower than it used to be and the temperature inside of here is starting to drop a little bit you know it's it's getting down there it's just started running at its more efficient you know uh level so you can see every once in a while the gas kind of finds its way out depending on where it needs to go the nice thing though is that i think for the first time this plant right down here is no longer over temperature. So it is cooling the base down. So air conditioning 2.0 is working out. Now there's many creative ideas that you guys gave me, which is I'll have to explore and try out, you know, as I continue to work on this base and, you know, and, and explore the different cool things that you can do inside this game. However, that will have to wait for another episode. So essentially, uh, the, I think my next step here is I have exosuits set up, they're running, I've got natural gas, I could still build onto that, but I think it's now time to get into oil and start playing around with that. So I'm going to be exploring that here in the future episodes, and I think there's a couple experiments I want to try here now that the game has actually officially released its update. So I'm looking forward to that. At any rate, guys, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down there in the comments section below. I've heard if you subscribe, you'll get 10% extra oxygen in your next base, but I, I cannot confirm or deny that. Thank you guys for watching, though. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.